Hello, Patriot Contraptions here, and today we're taking a look at building the Trunksy X1 3D printer. This printer comes as a kit, and I got it from eBay for $150, which isn't bad for a 3D printer. Now, let's take a look at what's in the kit. It comes in a plain brown box, nothing special about that. On the top level, you'll have your power systems and some of the base plates. On the bottom level, you'll have most of the control side, your extruder, and your LCD screen. Now also on the top level is a thumb drive. This is a very important device as it includes your instruction manual, which when you place it into your computer shows a very detailed instruction plan for setting up this printer and I highly recommend going along with it. I only had a few minor issues when following it. Now once that's done, take a look at your parts, lay them out. You don't have to pull out all the parts, but just the small packets. And one thing I recommend highly is getting a big dish and dumping all those little nuts and bolts out into it because otherwise there's no way to sort through them easily. Once that's done, go ahead and find the base plate and the piece of extruded aluminum that's the same length. Now you're going to need to put three of the eight millimeter long bolts through this into the bottom with some T-nuts. Now the T-nuts slide right into the aluminum and are a little bit of a pain, but you'll get used to it after a while. Then find the shortest piece of extruded aluminum and put it at a 90 degrees, screwing one T-nut into the bottom and two 90 degree reinforcement brackets onto each side. These took a little bit of work to get into place and I recommend sliding at least one of the T-nuts on first, sliding it all the way down the rail and then putting it on. Now moving to the Z-axis. It'll be the longest piece of extruded aluminum in the kit. And on the bottom side of it, you'll have a hole, hole drilled horizontally through it and two vertically. One of mine was a little stripped out, which I wasn't happy about. Also, the bolts on the bottom of the axis didn't go through the plate flush. So you ha I had ended up having to drill them out with a bigger drill bit so that they would fit flat into the bottom and it wouldn't scratch up my desk. Now, once I had done that, I had no issues putting the Z-axis in. I put the one bolt horizontally, and then I put another 90 degree reinforcement bracket on using a couple of the T bolts to hold it in place. Now only the L bracket remains to add using four T bolts, as shown. It's time to put on the Y axis motor mount and its limit switch, which is pre-installed. Now you can take this off if you want and clean off the cardboard under it, or not. I chose not to in my case. I'll probably end up doing it later on. But the Y limit, the Y stepper motor comes with one of the pulleys on it. It doesn't matter which one, and this will probably be loose. And it just slides onto the end of the extruded aluminum Y axis. It's now time to build the actual base plate you'll be printing on. And this is really straightforward. You're going to use a couple of the wheels and one of those white spacers under each wheel to hold it the proper distance from the other side, as shown here. Here, the wheel and the bolt side is on the inside, which is kind of annoying for tightening. Now the belt for the system goes through one of the little cracks that's in place on the printer bed, and then wraps around the motor, goes through the middle, and this is important, the middle of the extruded aluminum, and then around this pulley, which is pretty simple to assemble using just one bearing and a couple of washers and was pre-assembled in my kit, which was really handy as it just slipped onto the end of the rail. Now it's time to start work on the Z-axis, which is pretty straightforward. You're going to need to put two 8mm bolts in with T-clamps on the other side to hold your first piece of polyacrylic to the X-axis mount. And then a third is supposed to go through the piece of extruded aluminum through this polyacrylic and then out through the other side, which has your filament motor mount system on it. And you're in between the wheels that run on the rails are mounted using a couple of spacers. Now at this point I realized there was a major problem. There are no bolts provided in my kit that were long enough to go all the way across through the extruded aluminum and out for the third bolt. So I came up with my own solution and went out and got a bolt that fit. I quickly mounted in place the x-axis motor and then went ahead to slide the extruder assembly on and bolt in place the x-axis limit switch and the x-axis 
pulley assembly, which is the same as the Y one, which is a couple of washers with a little bearing in the middle of them. Mine was pre-assembled in the kit, and it was really easy to find and put on place with a little polyacrylic bracket. With the extruder assembly now on the rail, we can wrap the belt all the way around the x-axis and slide it through the little slots on the bottom of the extruder, which will hold it in place and allow it to move backwards and forward. You can kind of use the x-axis pulley as a tensioner for this. I moved on to put in place the z-axis motor, at which point I realized I had run out of the 8mm bolts which are required for this step. So I ended up coming up with a workaround solution as the 30 millimeter bolts, which I have plenty of in the kit, worked. I used them to hold the Z-axis motor in position. And this seemed to work quite fine. Now it's time for the filament tensioner assembly, which is held in place by three bolts running through into the top of the filament motor on the Y-axis. And of course, your little handle goes on top. This is pretty straightforward, so I'm not even going to bother explaining it. It's four bolts. It's easy to do. And the most critical part, your Z-axis limit switch. And let me take a couple of minutes to explain why this is critical. This is critical because it controls your set point for your extruder going over the build plate. If you don't have this at the right height, always start with it higher than necessary. Because otherwise your extruder will happen what happened to me. It comes down to its home position and ends up burning a nice little hole in your build plate when you fire up the machine. Now it's time to put in place your Z-axis coupler to the threaded dowel rod. This is pretty straightforward and uses a couple of the included Allen keys for it. Once that's all done, you now have to go ahead and start wiring up the kit. And of course, take a quick second to go ahead and install your filament pipe, which feeds filament from your little tensioner to your extruder. Now on to the electrical portion. This is pretty straightforward as far as the electrical go and a nice schematic is provided in the kit which you don't even need to be an electrician to read it. However, what did get complicated was these little bolts on the side and it took me a bit to figure out that you have to put the nut in first and then screw the bolt through to actually get it to tension down instead of having the nut already on the bolt. Now once your wiring is all in position it should look like this and then you're going to need to close up the rest of the box to and start wrapping the wiring up in the provided little wire wrap bundle <clears throat> and securing it in places where it needs to be so that it doesn't bump into any of your belts or limit switches etc once the wire is all wrapped you can go ahead and finish putting together your control box that's pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to go over covering it. At this point, the build is complete, and I ended up with a lot of leftover little nuts and bolts, which will be handy for repairs in the future, or just side projects. This is what the finished product of the Trunksy X1 printer looks like, fully assembled, and I'll be doing some other videos on my channel when I have time of how to actually level the plate before you print it, and home it and send your print print job over to the machine. So stay tuned for those. And as always, have a fantastic day. Patriot Contraptions signing out.